Ladies and gentlemen, I am Erica Sutherland, filmmaker and theatrical director. Welcome to the swearing in ceremony of the 54th mayor of St. Petersburg, Florida. Today we make history as Kenneth T. Welch becomes the mayor of our great city. And now, please join our local youth in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Playing the national anthem, please welcome Jordan Bodes. <laughs> Ode to St. Pete. It is the promises that we keep that truly make St. Pete. It is the communities that we feed that truly make St. Pete. It is the hands that we shake that make it inclusive for you and me. It is the highways that we cross that make our hearts grow deep. It is putting on your shoes so from your point of view I can see. It is the bond that will grow if we intentionally nourish our seeds. It will be our values that blossom a progress that never sleeps. A forward step into the future, we listen when the city speaks, looking to your voice to help us reap the reward of an even stronger St. Pete. As we put together all the eyes, letting the community create their own masterpiece. Performing Order My Steps, Katrina Welch, accompanied by Jamal Dorsey. Worthy, I want to walk worthy. My, my 
calling, my calling to, to fulfill. fulfill. And when you order, order my steps, Lord, then I'll do your, your blessed will. World this is world ever is ever changing. But you, oh Lord, you remain the same. And if you order oh my we but the image of grace and mercy? Who are we but the reflection of what's within? Who are we but servants with different tasks? Who are we but the examples of excellence destined to achieve greatness? We are the faces of a city on the water's edge, basking in the glow of the most beautiful rays of sunlight. Who are we but a tapestry of God's greatest work of art. We are St. Pete. It started right here, following in the footsteps of his father. This young man began his journey, leading him to 20 years of public service advancing equity and community development, fostering youth opportunities, education, and the arts, advocating for safe, healthy neighborhoods and housing opportunities for all, nurturing inclusive progress and public-private partnerships, listening, participating, and keeping in touch with his constituents, preparing him for this day. His story, his possibilities, his promise, it's our story. It's a symbol of our collective opportunity to become the best, the most authentic city we can be. Tonight's election victory confirms the desire of the people of St. Petersburg for leadership that will move us forward and not backward. That is the very definition of progress. We are St. Pete. And now, leading today's invocation, please welcome Pastor Clarence Williams of Mount Zion AME Church. Good morning. This is a beautiful morning, a wonderful morning. Uh, it's inauguration day. And what greater place can we have this wonderful event that in the home, in the front yard of our new mayor's home. And before we can celebrate, I was talking to him earlier, but before I can even say he's our mayor, uh, our state, our country has designated God as being the foundation of everything that we believe and live. So as a result of that, let's look to him. Our Father, our God, thank you now for this defining moment. Thank you for the joy that this moment brings. Thank you for those who have gone on before us, whose shoulders we stand. Thank you for this family who yet again has given of themselves this wonderful and great task of public service. 
Thank you for the father, for the mother. And most of all, oh God, thank you for this son, for his commitment, for his dedication, and his desire to serve. Oh God, we thank you for the history of this moment and the joy that it brings, the responsibilities required. And oh God, we know that he's gonna need our support and our encouragement to succeed. Thank you for this city, for this community, the one that he's been elected to serve. We pray that you will bring prosperity and fullness to our city. Thank you for the people now that you put in our lives to make life sweet. Thank you for all that you've done for us and the way that you do it. Bless this nation to overcome and eradicate this virus. We pray, oh God, that you will allow us to glean the lessons that we've learned, even in the pain and sufferings that we've had to endure, even to the extent that we had to move this ceremony. But God, continue to remind us that you're on the throne. Bless our city, our national leaders, and most of all, our citizens. Bless the United States of America. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, and now for the official swearing in of the 54th mayor of St. Petersburg, conducted by Judge Michael Andrews, please welcome our next mayor, Kenneth T. Welch. Please place your hand on the Bible, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Kenneth T. Welch. I, Kenneth T. Welch. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I am a citizen of the city of St. Petersburg. That I'm a citizen of the city of St. Petersburg. The state of Florida. The state of Florida. And the United States of America. And the United States of America. That as an officer of the city of St. Petersburg. That as an officer of the city of St. Petersburg. And a recipient of public funds. And a recipient of public funds. I will support. I will support. Protect. Protect. And defend and defend the Constitution and the government of the United States. The Constitution and the government of the United States. And the state of Florida. And the state of Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office under the city charter. That I'm duly qualified to hold office under the city charter. And the Constitution of the state. And the Constitution of the state. That I will faithfully perform the duties. That I will faithfully perform the duties. Of the office of mayor. Of the office of mayor. Of the city of St. Petersburg, Florida. Of the city of St. Petersburg, Florida on which I am now about to enter. On which I am now about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. And now, Mayor Kenneth T. Welch. Greetings. Greetings to the citizens of St. Petersburg, elected officials, friends and family, to our community partners, and the dedicated employees of our city. It is my distinct honor to address you today, although under unique circumstances, as the 54th mayor of the city of St. Petersburg. I want to thank everyone who has reached out with words of support. I am recovering and my symptoms remain mild. This is a significant moment for many reasons. It represents the breaking of another barrier. As a child of the civil rights era, I grew up in the areas of our city or my family lived not by choice, but by sanctioned discriminatory practices that defined where African-Americans could live in our city. As a kindergarten and first grade student, I attended the last segregated classes at Melrose Elementary. But during the Great American Teach-In in November, I returned to Melrose and spoke to students in the classrooms of two great teachers, Delia Michelle Doss and Natalie L. Amrani. I spoke to these wonderful and engaging students who reminded me of myself many decades ago. And I spoke to them as mayor elect of our city. Now I know that some of the Melrose students are watching today. And so I'd like to give a shout out to the Manatees and to all the students who are watching this inauguration today. I thank y'all for watching, keep up the good work, stay safe. We are very proud of you. So yes, this election is historic, but our goal is not to simply make history, Rather, we must work together to make a difference, to make an impact for this generation and for generations to come. Our collective vision will define what progress looks like for our entire city. Today, we embrace the people's desire for a community where every person is valued, 
every idea is considered based on its merits and where a common vision is forged based upon progress that is inclusive, innovative, informed, intentional, and in touch with all. The opportunities and the challenges before us are substantial and require focus. Resolving these issues will require straightforward dialogue, collaboration, and a sense of urgency. And I intend to lead us intentionally through this process, drawing from the city's amazing network of entrepreneurs, visionaries, educators, and business and cultural leaders. Coupled with the abundance of state-of-the-art technology and innovation available in our innovation district, we will not only meet these challenges, but we will be positioned to maximize these opportunities for the benefit of our entire city for generations to come. Now, toward that end, I will be announcing a number of appointments to help position our administration for an aggressive posture on these emerging issues. The first of these is the appointment of Stephanie Owens as Deputy Mayor and Chief of Policy and Tom Green as the Interim City Administrator. Stephanie and Tom bring significant experience in strategic policy development finance, operations, and service delivery, and will drive my opportunity agenda model for St. Petersburg. In the coming days, I will announce additional appointments and organizational changes to address continuity of operations, emerging issues, and to maximize our effectiveness, efficiency, and customer focus. The issue of housing demands a higher level of focus, for example. St. Petersburg and the Tampa Bay area experienced a 24% increase in apartment rental costs just last year, the highest rate of increase in the nation. And we also have among the highest ratio of corporate purchases of housing stock in the nation. Now, based on the importance of this issue and the rapidly emerging challenge of housing affordability, I am creating a high level position, the assistant administrator for strategic initiatives, whose first area of focus will be the preservation and development of affordable and workforce housing. I'm appointing former Neighborhood Affairs Administrator Rob Gerdes to this role. Rob's record of collaboration, cross-functional project management, policy development, and community engagement will serve us well in this important work. More initiatives and organizational changes will follow, including business process improvement and the implementation of an effective diversity, equity, and inclusion program. We will move intentionally on minority contracting and supplier diversity in response to the results of the disparity study and the findings of the structural racism report. We will also incorporate feedback from our community conversations held last month with nearly 500 residents and stakeholders participating over three days. A key part of improving our city services, I believe, is listening to the people who do the work. To the more than 3,200 employees of the city of St. Petersburg, I want you to know that you are valued. It is my goal to provide you with the tools that you need to set the standard for public service among city governments. And we will also listen to your recommendations for improving our operations, efficiency, and customer satisfaction. Now, let me be clear in stating that we have a great city, but we can be greater. One of the reasons that we are well positioned is because of the visionary work of our 53rd mayor, and my friend, Mayor Rick Kreisman. Thank you, Mayor Kreisman, for your leadership, for your focus on equity, inclusion, community, and economic development, and for your strong leadership during the unprecedented challenge of the COVID pandemic. Our city has become an incubator for new business and technology startups, a pioneer in innovative problem solving, a leader in creativity and cultural growth, a hub for medical and marine science research and discovery, and a thriving example of the live, work, play, and retire lifestyle. You have positioned our city for even greater progress. And I want to thank you and First Lady Kerry and Deputy Mayor and City Administrator, Dr. Kanika Tomlin and Chief of Policy and Public Engagement, Kevin King for your leadership of our city. I also want to thank our council members who are key partners in the leadership of our city. To Chair Gina Driscoll, and all of the current and former members of council. Thank you for your leadership and for your spirit of collaboration that has fueled our individual discussions thus far. Our city's success depends on us working together in a spirit of respect and collaboration. And I'm confident that we'll do just that. 
Now, I'm excited to work again with our friends on the county commission, including St. Pete's own Commissioner Renee Flowers and incoming chair Charlie Justice, who says he's from a place called the West Side. The city's relationship with our county commission is vitally important and greatly valued. Pinellas County provided funding for the pier and for the new police headquarters, tourist tax dollars to support our cultural institutions. They are a great partner in the creation of the South St. Pete CRA. And we continue to work closely with the county in our science-based response to the COVID pandemic. So as a step towards building a stronger working relationship, I have asked County Commission Chair Justice and City Council Chair Driscoll for a joint meeting of the County Commission, the City Council, and the Mayor's Office to discuss items of mutual interest, including our partnership with the Tampa Bay Rays. They have accepted, and I'm looking forward to this meeting with our partners. I'd also like to thank our congressional and state legislative leaders for your support and partnership from the Federal American Rescue Plan and Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill to state partnership on the Gateway Express, the Sunrunner Bus Rapid Transit, the first BRT in Tampa Bay, and the impactful decision to bring the new courthouse for the second district court of appeal to St. Petersburg. When we can work together for these kinds of impactful initiatives, the positive impact on jobs and quality of life for our community is substantial. Finally, I'd like to recognize our business community, including the arts community, for your investment in St. Petersburg. Your voice matters, and I look forward to working with you to support a culture and environment where business and the arts thrive. Now, we were blessed during my campaign and this inauguration to feature the work of many local artists, inclu including I-Bombs, Jabari Reed, Chad Misen, and Leo Gomez. The arts is a vital part of our culture and economy, and I remain committed to supporting the arts, to moving forward with purpose, to support the planned expansion of the Woodson African American History Museum, and to advocate for an adequate and consistent level of funding to support the arts, a level of support that lives up to the moniker of City of the Arts. And as I close, I'd like to speak to who we are in St. Pete. Last week, we celebrated Kwanzaa. Umoja, the first principle of Kwanzaa, is reflected in the African proverb, I am because we are. I, for example, am a child of the gas plant where Tropicana Field now stands. I am a product of the last segregated schools in Pinellas and the first truly integrated schools. I am the son of Dr. David T. Welch, who served 12 years as a council member and my mom, Aletha, our queen, a pillar of wisdom, love, and quiet strength. Love you, mom. I am a husband to Donna, father to Kiana in Kenya, and our new and very rowdy family member, Sonny the Rescue Pup. And I have a huge and loving human family as well, including my sister, Katrina. Sis, thank you for the wonderful song. My nieces, Kina and Andresa, my nephew, Trey, and many family members who are watching virtually today. Thank you all for your love and support. I am a lover of Harleys, Prince, football, and music. And I play guitar every Sunday that I can at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Now that is just some of my story. And everyone viewing this address today and throughout St. Pete has your own story that is just as important and personal, your own perspective and lived experiences. It is important that we look at our diversity, not as something that divides us, but rather it can be our greatest strength. When we listen to each other and work to truly understand our viewpoints, we grow stronger collectively by building on our individual knowledge and strengths. When we do that, we can and will move past the silos, the prejudices, the petty politics, and we will be able to build an inclusive path forward. The conversations may not be comfortable, or easy, but as we demonstrated at our community conversations last month, it can be done. In fact, it must be done because we are in this together. We are that young person searching for an apartment that doesn't consume half their salary. We are that senior looking for security in their retirement as the cost of living and utilities continues to increase. We are the small business owners struggling to keep the family business open in the second year of a global pandemic. We are the young people who attended our youth summit in June and spoke to the mental trauma 
of living with an epidemic of senseless gun violence, which plagues some of our neighborhoods. We are the LGBTQ student looking for acceptance instead of hostility and prejudice. We are the sons and daughters of the deuces and the gas plan, still waiting, still waiting for the promises of equitable economic development made more than three decades ago. We are those hardworking citizens who want their neighborhoods to be safe and healthy places to raise their families, not race tracks or firing ranges or dumping grounds for litter. We are a community that must make responsible decisions on infrastructure, environmental policy, and resiliency to mitigate impacts and adapt to the reality of sea level rise and climate change. Friends, we are all of those things and more. The power of our partnership is in our collective capacity for progress. And working together, we will move our city forward every day. We are St. Pete. And as my father would say, it's time to get to work. May God bless you and may God bless the city of St. Petersburg. For our benediction, Imam Abdul Ali, Rabbi Philip Weintraub, and Pastor Renee Phillips. May our Lord peace be with you. I shall share with you three Islamic quotes from the Islamic faith. My fellow servant, we are one. We share the same bread that makes us one. When we pour from the same cup that also makes us one. May our Lord peace be with you. Even as our diverse brothers and sisters come and go, we are one. Even as they scatter to posts in this city, this state, and around the globe, we are one. With gratitude, we share the table. With gratitude, we depart. With gratitude, we release one another, trusting in the one who makes us one. Go in peace. Thank you for joining us on this historic day. Congratulations, Mayor Welch. We look forward to working with you to make progress for our great city. We are St. Pete. Thank you.